This one is more simple than it looks. You hadn't signaled for the kick to be taken, so assuming you advise the attacking player that he must not take the kick until your signal, caution him or send him off if you consider he used excessive force. Restart with the original free kick. Defending players standing in front of the ball to stop quick free kicks is a problem in the game, but in this case the attacking player is also at fault. Welcome back to The Ref Show in the company of David Hurst and Keith Hackett. Before we leave the subject of the Euros, we were talking uh, before the break in the first half there about how the, the game's been allowed to flow, uh, but also um, about how referees seem to be in tune and in empathy with the players and the teams. We talked on a recent Ref Show about football coaches being employed by PLU Luigi Colina to brief referees on the tactics, etc. Is that something, David, first of all, that could be usefully brought in in the Premier League, for instance? Well, I think, I think it's something that in the past has been a around. You know, referees have gone into, get into training sessions and, and watched sessions being played and, and picked out players that they know on what's going to happen. Uh, but it's, 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 it can only help, without a doubt. I mean, for, for a referee to have maybe ex-players or ex-coaches or coaches in the game still, helping them out of watching games, this is what this player does, this is what that player does, be aware of it. Yeah. You know, it's not always a, a, not a foul, sometimes it will be, but that's what we've seen in this championship. This you know, team plays long ball, this team has exactly. five at the back, yeah. so, this so team it, keeps it across it, the back. It can only work for, for positioning as well. Yeah. You know, his, his fitness, getting him into the position, because he knows that if it goes there, it's 90% of the time it will go long, so he goes and gets a better position. So it can, it can only benefit them, yeah. What do you think? Oh, I can, I'm very much for it. And in fact, I can tell you that in my time, uh, Roger Dilks brought this into the, into the mix. Obviously, as an ex-player, uh, uh, Mark Alsey and others would have a conversation about the changing tactics. So we raised awareness of individual players who might give us a bit of pain. Uh, we took things like Paul Gascoigne, where we knew that if he was on the bench, subbed, he would get more and more frustrated. Result, when he comes on, the first thing he does is take that frustration out of another yeah. player. So we, as a group, would t the referee would go to the touchline, meet Gascoigne, chat to him as he comes on and say, look, we want a game, and calm him down before the game restarts. Uh, the, the tactics of, you know, all of a sudden, the team goes 1-0 down, the response to that, and then the changing tactics when substitutes are employed. So it's, it is very much part of the game that I, I'm not so sure that the depth of that information is going through. I even brought in to the accountability process <clears throat> the introduction of former managers and players. And that's this, one of the areas that I wanted them to talk about, but I don't think they've been encouraged to do that. I think they go there they spend more time looking at the referee's performance and analysing the referee's performance and his interaction with players, which is a proactive, uh, a reactive thing rather than a proactive thing. But I'd be very keen for that. Match delegates. I think, I think you've enforcer. got a situation as well of, uh, of referees and officials coming into a training session now, as mm -hmm. big as the game is, and you know, what's the formation? What can I watch? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, what, what are you telling them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a contradiction in yeah, it, really, yeah. as well. So yeah. managers are very private in that department yeah. these days. We see a lot of training sessions behind closed doors and things. Yeah. You know, now to allow it, I mean, it's got to be a, across the board and everybody signs up for it. But a coach can see how a team plays and can impart well, that exactly, to a referee. Like you say, a change of a system yeah. or whatever that yeah. would help a referee, definitely. Excellent. But I mean, uh, you know, historically, we, when, the, when the goalkeeper got the ball, we were, we were clearly running backwards to the halfway line, knowing in more or less it was going to be a long ball. Yeah. And of course, as soon as you got the tactic of throwing the ball out to the defender, mm. you suddenly found, whoops, just a minute, you've got to squeeze towards yeah. goal yeah. rather than actually go long. But so, it helps to know. Yeah. One perennial subject when we talk about refereeing is a shortfall in numbers, grassroots game, not enough officials, mm. etc. And I think that problem persists. Uh, what can be done, Keith, to accelerate the process of encouraging youngsters to take up the whistle. It's not, it's a hard sell, isn't it, really? Well, it is a hard sell. I think the first thing is that the game as a whole has got to police itself, that it gives the right image to say, look, ref refereeing can be enjoyable. 
you know, the occurrences that we reported on last year, they're rare, but they're this increasing intolerance by players to pub teams on a Sunday morning getting totally frustrated, parents getting frustrated by a young developing referee. We're all becoming slightly intolerant. We all, they all expect, every young referee that, that steps out on the field to be a, a Kalina or a Howard Webb or a, or a Clattenburg or a Halsey. Yeah. Uh, so there's less tolerance. Um, but for me, you know, okay, I, I was a frustrated player, I wasn't good enough to play, but by hell, it gave me a massive opportunity, you know, and this affords to every young referee getting in the game, this opportunity to become one towards the professional end of the game and sharing the field with, with the likes of David Hurst and others. I mean... But you could go further as a referee, realistically, than you could as a player. <laughs> really, couldn't I've you? I've never been to a World Cup yet. Well, <laughs> there you go. Well, exactly. I mean, I, I, I think uh, referees take me to over 100 countries. Yeah. I never aspired when I first took up the whistle and refereed at intake school in 1960 that that's what would happen. Yeah, yeah. And 50 plus years later, I'd still be very much involved in the game. How can we then make it more <clears throat> more attractive? It's not just a financial thing. Ex-players should be in the game as referees, oh, surely. Uh, look, Alan, that's for me the major shortfall. Um, you know, we look at cricket, we look at other sports, cricket in particular, yeah, yeah, yeah. you suddenly see top-class player becoming a top-class umpire almost at the end of his career. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of what appears to be months. Yeah. In our game, we are expecting a professional player who's been at the very highest level of the game to suddenly go back and referee in the local parks. Yeah. Now, come on, there's a trade-off. I've always said, look, for all the years of of learning the game. A player learns the game through movement, positioning on the field, setting up. He's doing exactly what we as referees take 10 years to learn yeah. in the local park. So how are we going to get David into, <coughs> uh, into refereeing then and attract him into refereeing? The how game, the game it's the game. The game, like the FA and the Premier League and other organisations have got to say, look, there is a shortcut here. Now I recognise the, the potential Premier League player currently doesn't want to be a, a referee because he's earning alleged millions. Mm. But against those few that earn that, yeah. that amount of money, there's lots of what are termed journeyman pros who don't get anywhere near that. Mm. Those are the ones that we need to encourage. Those players who've had a few years at the academy and then get, this, get rejected, mm. right? Let's get some of them into refereeing, that's, that's and, a great point. and and I think I think this all aspect needs to be, look, let us put value into refereeing, yeah. and have an understanding that we are part of the game. We will never be what should be the front end of the house, yeah. and that is the players. Yeah. P people pay money to watch players perform, not the referee. Not the referee. But if the referee has a greater understanding of the game, yeah. right, yeah. and a young player. Uh, who's been through the academy system, knows everything about fitness, nutrition and diet, he knows about positioning, he's got a good sense and you can quite comfortably bring him to be a referee in a matter of months, not in years. Yeah. And just finally, before we run out of time, in talking of encouraging people into refereeing, we need more female officials. Oh, we, England's massively behind. I go to America, they've got plenty of women refereeing at all levels of the game. We haven't. And I think that we put up the barriers that prevent women getting through. And, and, you know, we've had some really good referees. Wendy Toms was outstanding referee and a top-rate assistant, Sean Massey. Okay, she's had a family, and, but, but as an assistant referee, she was as good as anybody. Yeah. So there are people there. We need to encourage more, and we need more at grassroots level. It's, it's, it's to have the track out there to, to get on. Uh, I think that's a great point that Keith makes. We have, we have thousands of young footballers get to 18, 21. And female footballers. Oh, and, female, footballers. and female footballers that come out of the game, yeah. go on to find other jobs. Let's find them a job in the game still. Yeah. Where there's no uh, structure at the moment, I don't think. In academy football, we, we will straight away put the, put the young, uh, young apprentices, sorry, scholars, into uh, their football licensing, you know, their coaching licenses. Yeah. A, B, 
and onwards, yeah? And, does and we referee, never do that with a referee's yeah. course. Uh, yeah, and does, a, a, does a former referee have to manage referees? Yeah. Let's go a bit wider in our thoughts. What right. an interesting point to finish on. Thanks very much, Keith. Thank you as ever, David. Thank you for you, your what, attendance, <laughs> as it were. You're, you're 100% in your attendance watching our show, which is much appreciated. We also appreciate all your queries and comments to youaretheref.com. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>